What's up, everybody? This your boy A Dog, and this is my beautiful mama right here. Hey, y'all. And today, uh, this is gonna be her first time checking out. As y'all do know, I have already reacted to this. I wanted my mom to react to it with me this time and get her thoughts on it. It's gonna be Thomas Sowell, Facts About Slavery, Never Mentioned in School. Like I said, make sure y'all hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into this. This excerpt is taken from the book Black Rednecks and White Liberals, Untold Facts About Slavery. The instrumental use of the history of slavery today also underlies the claim that slavery grew out of racism. For most of its long history, which includes most of the history of the human race, slavery was largely not the enslavement of racially different people for the simple reason that only in recent centuries has either the technology or the wealth existed to go to another continent to get slaves and transport them en masse across an ocean. Mm. People were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. The peoples of the Balkans wow. were enslaved by fellow Europeans, as well as by the peoples of the Middle East, for at least six centuries before the first African was brought to the Western Hemisphere. Before the modern era, by and large, Europeans enslaved other Europeans. Asians enslaved other Asians. Africans enslaved other Africans. Wow. And the indigenous peoples See, of the... See, I didn't know that. I didn't, I, I didn't know that. So it said Asians enslaved other Asians and Europeans enslaved other Europeans. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I, didn't I did know not that. know I thought it was just all black. I did too. You know, I, slaves was blacks. I didn't know it was Asians or Europeans. I didn't know like they enslaved their own. I, I did not know that. Me either. The Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Slavery was not based on race, much less on theories about race. Only relatively late in history did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale as to promote an ideology of racism that outlasted the institution of slavery itself. Wherever a separate people were enslaved, they were disdained or despised, whether they were different by country, religion, caste, race, or tribe. In East Africa, the Maasai were feared slave raiders, and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. Just as late as 1891, man. it was reported that Manuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there. Oh. Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger yeah, than all of Europe. Right there too. The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least two million. Ooh. The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries, Roots, by Alex Haley. You know that, Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. This instrumental use of history, or purported history, is open to the same objections as other instrumental myth-making. Despite the impression created by Roots, during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. The average life expectancy of a white man in the interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, the death rates among them. That just got to be bad. People were getting bought, man. Yeah, it's like they, it's like their life is up for sale. Just life, just up for sale. Like you got to go wherever they tell you to go. Do whatever they tell you to do. <sighs> like, man. And another thing, you know, if your skin is darker, you have to work outside. Yeah. But if your skin is lighter, you can work inside. Man. And then another thing, a lot of the masters, if you light skin, they'll have sex with you and stuff. 
Oh man! Because you are from I, high skin, and then you have babies bound. Yep. And they'll put the babies like they wife on head. Wow. Yeah. I mean, not having no control of your life, being told what to do, when to take a bath, when to. <sighs> and then if you don't do it, then they whip you with whips. <sighs> you have marks out on your back. Oh my God. And legs and chest and everything. White crews wow. of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. It was only much later, after quinine and other medical measures enabled Europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases, was it possible for them to invade Africa in force and establish empires there. But by then, the Atlantic slave trade had already been ended. During the era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans, who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. The crew of a slave ship was in no position to defy African rulers and their Ooh. armies by going out across the land and capturing what people willy-nilly. The stronger African peoples captured like and enslaved the weaker peoples. That's what they used to, to tie out, well, you know, to tie the blacks together, to keep them, you know together make sure they don't run oh okay or escape because if it do it'll tighten up oh dang the same pattern found over the centuries in europe asia the western hemisphere and polynesia in the asa land the ngoni and yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes in uganda the baganda made life miserable for their neighbors and the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu in Rwanda, the Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba, and the latter, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. It was precisely the fact that Europeans, except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was, with some Africans Just committing suicide to like avoid that. capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. Mm. Historian David Brian Davis pointed out that Europeans had little contact with the actual process of enslavement, and that as late as 1721, the Royal African Company asked its agents to investigate the modes of enslavement in the interior. Europeans typically saw only the end results, enslaved people being offered for sale on the coast. It was much the same story in the Ottoman Empire, where those who bought slaves had no idea what these slaves had been through before. The unique position of the West... Did a lot of them get, like, separated from their family, like, when they were getting sold and stuff like that? Like, yes, they was. So even if you had a, you had a, a wife and a daughter, and they'll take you and the other one and probably go with somebody else. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Yeah, they'll get separated. Whoa. ...world in the history, and especially the destruction of slavery, need not imply that there was unanimity within the West on this institution. In addition to whites who defended the enslavement of Africans on racial grounds, or who opposed general emancipation on social grounds, there were many whites, and even blacks, who defended slavery as a matter of self-interest as slave owners. Although most black owners of slaves in the United States were only nominal owners of members of their own families, there were thousands of other blacks in the antebellum South who were commercial slave owners, just like their white counterparts. An estimated one-third of the free persons of color in New Orleans were slave owners, and thousands of these slave owners volunteered to fight for the Confederacy during the Civil War. Black slave owners were even more common in the Caribbean, in short, there were many defenders of slavery in the West, even in the 19th century. And outside the West, slavery was too widely accepted to require defense. No other nation ended slavery in the same way as the United States did, and few well, ended it after so short a struggle, as history is measured. How and why did slavery end in most of the world? There were two major processes. Over the centuries, as more and more territories around the world consolidated into nation-states with their own armies and navies, 
raiding those territories to capture and enslave the people who lived within them became more hazardous in itself and also risked military retaliation against the countries from which the raiders came. Thus, more and more peoples became off-limits to slave raiders over time. Put differently, the areas which remained subject to slave raiding over the centuries were primarily those where the people lived in smaller or weaker societies. Such societies continued to exist where it was difficult, for geographic or other reasons, to consolidate large areas under one government. This was true of the Balkans, the backwaters of Asia, and much of sub-Saharan Africa. By the early modern era, sub-Saharan Africa, with its numerous and severe geographic handicaps, was one of the last remaining areas from which vast numbers of people could be enslaved. Wow. <laughs> I did not know a lot of that. You did? No, I did. Wow. <laughs> What's your thoughts about it? What you think? <laughs> I think growing back in growing up back in those days, it was it was horrible. Man. How they treated you and how, you know, they tell you when to get up. They tell you when to eat, when to sleep, when to work. Yep. You don't have, you didn't have no independence. None whatsoever. Then your wife or children get taken. And then nine out of ten, you ain't going to see them no more. That's what I was saying. Like, if, if this person buy them and then this person buy, buy the wife and this person buy your husband and the child, like, it, it, that is just and then devastating. Whoever, if, if y'all, you know, you and your husband, your children, and then a lot of them will rape your wife in front of you. You can't do nothing. You can't do nothing about it. You can't do nothing about it. Then if the, uh, the wife have a child and the child turn out to look like his wife, mm -hmm. then it'll go, then the, uh, the master will keep him. Wow. And, and pays off as his wife. Yeah. And the baby. Whew. I was just like you. When I first watched, I was like, man, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know. Crazy back in the day. It was. And I'm glad it's not like that now. Yeah. But it's still, we still have people treating us like, you know, we ain't, we ain't human. Yeah. Because you can go to a store anywhere and, and speak to somebody that's white. Yeah. They won't even acknowledge you. Won't acknowledge you. And like I said, you got some that are. They are nice, and you, like you said, you might have some that, you know, they still present. You know, they just where we live in it. You know, yeah. like they say, everybody ain't perfect. It's all right. But, you know, it is what it is. But me, I look at people for people, not for their skin color, yep. nothing else. And that's the way I do it, though, not for their skin color. If you treat me right, you treat me with respect, I'm going to treat you yeah. right and treat you with respect, regardless yeah. of your skin color. That's right. And a lot of people, you know, they still going back how their parents taught them to. Yeah. Because they had to learn it from someone. Yep. So they were brought up like that. So evidently when they get older that's how their mentality is. This is what I learned as a child. So this is what I know what to, how to treat people. There you Certain go. People. See that's why I'm glad I brought my mom off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, y'all we have made it to the end of the video, and uh, we want to thank you all for watching. Like I said, make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I can get my mama back on for some more videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. And it's a pleasure <laughs> being here, and thank y'all for watching. All right. Until next time. <laughs> thank you, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs>